How do we get Reaper to create a file that we can send to a friend, a mastering engineer, or a digital distributor? Well, in Reaper, this process is called rendering. Rendering actually records the output of the master track to a new file. This process has a lot of different names. Sometimes it's called mix down, bouncing, exporting, but again in Reaper, it's called rendering. First thing we need to do is tell Reaper the exact part of the timeline we want to render. If we don't do this, Reaper won't know exactly what part of the project to render. And we'll leave a few seconds of silence at the beginning and at the end of the song, and we don't want that. So we need to select the area in the timeline we want to render. I like to leave a small amount of silence at the beginning of the song, say one beat, just to make sure the first note of the song doesn't get cut off. I'll also extend the selection just a little past the end of the song to make sure I don't cut off any reverb that might take a while to die out. Usually I go past one or two seconds. So now I've got the part of the project I want to render selected. So what next? Next we need to open Reaper's Render dialog box. You can find that under the File menu. The first thing we're going to do is tell Reaper that we've made a time selection for the file. Under the Render Bounds dropdown, I'm going to choose Time Selection. Next thing we're going to do is name our file. I suggest using the name of your project. And the most accurate way to do this is to use a wildcard here. A wildcard is a small bit of computer code that automatically names the file for us. So clicking on the wildcard button brings up all the possibilities we can use. We're going to use project. So using the project wildcard will automatically name the rendered file the same name as the Reaper project. Next, we'll tell Reaper where to put this new file. Well, clicking browse and then browse for directory, We'll bring up an OS dialog box for choosing where we want to create the file. I'm going to save it on the desktop. And if we look at this area here, we can see exactly where the file will be created and what it will be called. Next, we need to choose what type of file Reaper is going to make. Reaper can export or render to many different file formats. And which file type you choose will depend on what stage of the project you're at. Let's look at a couple of examples. In this first example, we're going to send out our song for mastering, either to a professional mastering engineer or to one of the online mastering services we talked about in the last lecture. In this case, we need to render out our mix as a WAV file. WAV files are the most common and most compatible high quality file type. They can be opened on any Windows or Mac computer. And so for that reason, the WAV format is considered the standard when it comes to high quality audio file formats. And because we're sending this out for mastering, we need to make sure that there are no plugins currently on the master track. So if you put any plugins on the master track, make sure they're disabled before rendering this file. You can see here that I've turned off the effects on my master track, and you can tell because the effects button is red. Under the output file format, there are a bunch of options for WAV files. WAV is already selected here. We're going to look at the WAV bit depth first. If you're sending the song out for mastering, choose 24-bit PCM. You can leave the rest of the options here as they are. However, you should check in the options area above to make sure that dither and noise shaping are not selected. This is because dither and noise shaping should be done after mastering. So we're going to leave that for the mastering engineer to do. Finally, I'm going to add 24-bit mix to my file name here. So I can quickly see this is a 24-bit file. Now we're ready to render one file. Reaper will now render our mix into a stereo wave file onto our desktop. Now let's look at another scenario. You've already mastered your song and it's ready for digital distribution. In other words, you're uploading your file to an online service such as Bandcamp or SoundCloud, or you're using a digital distribution service to upload your songs to places like iTunes or Spotify. We're still going to create a WAV file, but there are some important differences between some of the parameters we need to set. First, because this is the final mix and is not going out for mastering, I'm going to make sure I've enabled my master track effects. Now I'll bring up the Render to File dialog box. In this case, I'm going to use WAV 16-bit PCM. It's already set to WAV as the format, but the bit depth here I'm going to switch to 16-bit. This is because most digital distribution services only accept 16-bit WAV files. Now, because we're lowering the bit depth, and since we're not sending this off to a mastering engineer, we're going to check off dither and noise shaping. 
Dither and noise shaping will help keep the sound quality as high as possible. It's also important when rendering for digital distribution that your file is rendered at a sample rate of 44.1 kHz or 44,100 Hz. In the Options area, the sample rate is the first option available. It should already be set to 44,100 Hz, but if it's not, choose 44,100 Hz from the drop-down menu. If you needed to change the sample rate to 44,100, change the resample mode to HQ. Finally, I'm going to add 16-bit master to the file name, just so we don't get confused with the other file I exported earlier. And I'm going to double check that it will be created on the desktop, which I can see right here, render to desktop. And we're ready to render one file. Let's take a look at those files. Here they are on my desktop. And if we look at the file size, we'll notice that they're actually pretty big. This one's 53.1 megabytes. So what if you want to create a smaller file you could send to someone via email? Well, we're going to look at rendering directly to an MP3 in the next video.